like there's a couple of possible difficulties, but if they can overcome them, they have really, really good matchups going into the game later on. I feel like it's it's okay because four of their heroes can actually kill waves. Remaining. So like if you look they at Wind Rain, yeah, Lesh is, is pretty much their only real Bloodseeker Bloodseeker is decent. Is okay, but I think that's where it's gonna it's really gonna lean towards Blink Pool because they have all these heroes that can kill creeps and then a Nyx on top of that, so he has the freedom to pretty much run around the map and look for whatever kills he can find. And there will become a stage in the game this Lesh is a core where you're not gonna want to be a Lesh core anymore. It's against Pugna and Nyx, this is such a hard Lesh game. But I think the DK ban was well. Yeah. He's the type of hero that can barrel down a lane, doesn't care about the stuff. That's another answer. That's greedy. Off lane, but yeah. Well, wow. you've seen the draft. What do you guys think? I, for me, it's a very close, but I would say blink pool, like very slight advantage. Yeah. On a scale from close to Kingwin versus OG drafts, <laughs> this is pretty close, actually. Okay. Um, I have a hard time calling a clear favorite because what I need to see is how much pressure Blinkpool can put in their lanes. This is my primary concern. It's a position 5 Windranger. It looks to be in a position 4 Nyx. If they can't punish Spectre a lot, Spectre has really good matchups in this game. It's the kind of hero that can just eat Pugna alive yeah. when it has one or two items. It prevents Magnus from using Blink Dagger. And with good sentry vision placed by Wind and Rain, if the Nyx can't find an opening, We've seen this problem from Misery before, where he doesn't have an item. By being a weak position for in lane, Nyx's laning is not that good. And uh, they're a bit limited on options. Alright. <coughs> well, <laughs> Cinderin dies. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna hop into this game number one. I don't think that there's pause. Oh, there is. Kitrak needs to go to the bathroom real quick. They haven't just, chosen any of their characters yet. He's just so excited about this game that he had to run off. They're getting out of the way early, so they can come back for game two and three. Exactly. Bending. Yeah, I, uh, I feel like we've seen a lot of Spectre losing in this region. Um, and the Peel versus Spectre matchup is still something that's like... I feel like if they're on equal farm, it can kind of go either way. It depends upon the other uh, heroes in the game. But maybe that Magnus is going to be that X factor of like giving him the power and scaling up more quickly. The thing to look at here is if Lesh has a good game and has eventually a BKB, <clears throat> he can take care of Peel. And Spectre can take care of the rest. So they can, like, how to put it, they can, like, distribute responsibilities in fights. They're like, Lesh, if you just sit on PL, I'll do the rest. And that actually does seem likely that that could end up being the situation in yeah. this game if I if they don't punish them hard. But I, think I need to see Lesh Rex's game. There's also the possibility that with Winter Rain's heroes, their ability to siege is pretty... Like, Lesh is their only siege. Yeah. And I think it's going to be a game where Lesh is going to be forced into a very early BKB. And if he doesn't like make everything happen with like that 10, 9, 8 second. I can very easily see this going like 30, 35 minutes and then your Lesh goes from being like this hero that can deal with the Madara PL to okay, now it's a hero that has way too many counters and you can't really walk into fights and feel safe. Yeah. I, I think there's a possibility for both. So, But I was leaning towards Blink Pool just because of that factor. Typically when I, I see a really close draft, I tend to favor the team that I feel will have the easier time executing like mm -hmm. post 30 minutes. I think the Spectre could do well. I'm just, what is she going to be against the Mag Wind Ranger lane potentially, or even the Nexus Assassin, depending? They don't have like the sustain of a Warlock to keep the Spectre alive or healthy in a lane, which could be kind of rough, I suppose. They're having a good time. Yeah, they're, they're, they're having a great old time. What do you guys think of the Nitsibitsia line? How do you I rank? Think, it? What I think it we need to yeah, I don't know what play it, it more. I have no what's, idea what what's the direct translations? Anyone? I have no, no idea. idea. I mean, I, I I always compare them to the Filipino caster line, and I feel like there's just no no comparison. Normally, They're too good. Normally. I like the "Where's my team?" one. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Unless if you're playing against No Fear and he uses it twice every minute. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's. We don't let. Hey, do you know? Do you know? Do you know? At least we have some more like. We have some extra different lines this year. We, we have more lines than we had last year. You yeah. know, they're not spamming the same thing over and over. I mean, they are, but uh, there's some. There always seems to be clear favorites. It's true. And the other thing is like the variety with like the hero voice lines as well. Yeah, that's true. It, without Dota Plus, it would be a lot worse. But like with Topson using the Dota Plus ones, it, yeah. it adds that extra flair that makes it funny instead of just them spamming the same old voice line over and over again. It's not pay to win, it's pay to taunt. That's why you guys gotta be higher level Dota Plus so you can get those extra chat wheel options open. It's very important. Mm. It elevates your game. Trust me. 
I've been there. Man, they are taking their time. Yeah. When it rain, what's going on, buddies? Hopefully they didn't clog it. <laughs> I'm sure they got someone in-house for that, right? Yeah, I would hope so. I would uh, hope they have a manager, even. I was. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what you sign up for when you take the manager job, Mark. Wait, you're the manager, sometimes, and here's the plunger. Sometimes you just got to do some things you don't want to do, unfortunately. Didn't, uh, didn't PPD put out, a, a like, a, when he was in the video or something for uh, EG when he was CEO, like, he started off the video by going down with a plunger or something and fixing the toilet? Do you guys remember that? I didn't see that video. I don't, I don't think I saw that. I no, may have seen bad. that. It does ring a bell, but I don't remember the, like, yeah. how it looked. Um, I think I saw that Wind and Rain, they, uh, w when I looked up the Liquipedia page, they were based in e uh, the UK, actually. So I think they're playing their matches from the United Kingdom. I might be wrong about that, um, but at least that's where the organization is. I thought somebody said maybe? Germany. I think Wind and Rain is a UK org, but the okay. food camp is in Germany. I'm pretty confident that I, okay. I heard they're playing. All right. That's a good place to play Central, good paying all that good stuff, so I wouldn't be surprised. Not that UK is bad, but... Uh... Isn't like that the meme, though, UK internet? I think there's I've a heard, lot of I've heard some memes. horror stories. Ted hates UK internet. Really? He complains about it like at least twice a week. Ted's a Brit though, so he hates everything. Yeah, but if your internet's bad, it's it's not something that you can be opinionated about. Your internet's either good or it's not. Yeah. I, I mean he doesn't like dire straits, so you know, secretly I hate him, but he can't you can't be opinionated about if my internet is connected or not. Not if it's connected or not, but if it's good or not, you can't. Okay, so what is your definition of good I don't know, probably different from yours. So not dropping packets, good ping. That's good internet, right? Decent download speed. Some people need more download speed than others. Yes. What are and you downloading? Speed. I don't know what speed. Ted's doing. <laughs> That's true. That's I mean, same, Ted has a family. <laughs> yeah. So he's probably more... Actually, I don't know if that's true. Sorry, Ted. He's <laughs> where are you getting with this? <laughs> where are you going? I mean, the point is, cannot be opinionated about something that... Yeah. Gabe gets what I'm saying. I'm with you. I'm with you. I mean, the I get it. I just like... About, I have... Uh, I like messing with you. I see that. I have a couple uh, nieces and nephews, and they are known to, like, just go online and, like, download, like, the random games that are, like, come play this little, like, you know, bubble trouble game or something, and it's, like, seven gigabytes of malware. Oh, you know God. I mean? So I feel like there's a possibility that Ted could be getting uh, owned by his kids also. Very possible. What now, Andy? You hate to see it. I don't know. Maybe I internet. got nothing. I'm out of ammunition. Maybe he's got good internet, but he's taken the bullet out of my gun. Okay, <laughs> you didn't even win that argument on your own. He had the win it for you. It was you. a good disarm. It like was. Thanks uh, a lot, time, Abe. So we got another resume. There was a resume a second ago. Okay, this hey, one is, is approved by this resume. Is a, they're in. This is a mutually requested resume. That was yeah. a very long pause, by the way, to get into the game. Sometimes you just really need to go. Yeah, I guess so. Go, you gotta go. <laughs> the nice thing about Wind and Rain was that they said one in bathroom and nobody picked their heroes. So nobody singled out. <laughs> it's like, it could have been anyone. There's no culprit here. You don't know who was in the bathroom. They're playing together already as a team before the game even starts. Or maybe they went to the bathroom together. That's even a, like higher tier, I think. Uh, yeah. That's next level. Someone had to write in chat, though. So that's one probably. team in bathroom. Yeah. Have you ever was. actually needed, like, one team <laughs> have you needed moral support when you go to the bathroom before? Need your team behind you? Maybe oh, you, need some bad you don't want anybody behind you when you're in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> you just say it. Teams have, teams have different, like, uh, different rituals, you know? Okay. I, yeah, pers don't know. I personally have never had a ritual like that, but I don't know. Maybe it's Ritz's favorite. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're hopping into this game. Well, thank you so much to our wonderful couch as we Prepare called you wonderful battle. again. Nice. We'll just, <laughs> we head into this one. Um, but yeah, Blink Pool, Wind and Rain, it's actually happening now. The GLHFs are coming out, and despite the early saline that was going through the all chat, it's all happy cause now. Quick tip. So, uh, curious to see the laning situation here. As for now, it looks like Blinkpool are possibly planning to spam their chat wheel as much as possible. Oh my god, please, no! I actually can't hear myself think right now. Is that something that you would say as a captain? You're like, alright, we're just gonna get in their heads. Let's all spam the same chat wheel emote. I don't think it's a legitimate strategy here. I think they're just doing it because they're bored. Nothing's happening this early on in the game. That's but fair. it could be. There could be a fight breaking out, but it doesn't look so it battle. appears to be a Nyx Magnus off lane against Spectre Witch Doctor. Nyx Mag is not that good of a lane, so I think Spectre will be relatively happy if he gets to face this. Uh, Wind Ranger is currently sitting down here as well to go and contest this rune. Uh, doubt they will try for an aggressive trialing though, but you never know. Uh, we did see the Witch Doctor place this ward. There were some yep. slight pings by the Nyx Assassin. Don't know if you spotted the Witch Doctor walking away, but they at least see the Magnus. I don't think they saw. 
The battle begins. Yeah, they're gonna blow them away. So only one rune for the Radiant here. Good start for Blinkpool, getting three of those. You mentioned you really like the Bloodseeker being played in the offlane this game. What is it particularly that you sort of feel is the strong part of it? Uh, I think Bloodseeker matches up really well against a lot of melee cores in the safe lane. So the way matchups usually go nowadays is Quelling Blade is extremely powerful. I think it's too strong, but that's okay. beside the point here. It gives 24 damage. Um, if two melee heroes are facing each other, generally the Quelling Blade will offset whatever damage advantage you have on denies. So let's say you're playing a melee hero versus melee hero and one hero has 10 damage more than the other, you still have 14 more damage on last hits than the enemy on denies. But with Blood Rage, you can actually deny away from the safe laner. So, uh, unfortunately for Rev, however, he is alone in this lane. I'm really surprised they're starting three bottom. Well, they got the first blood out of it. I was not ready for that one, but Kitrak, Milan, and Ritsu combining onto Misery here. And maybe they'll just start as a flat-out safe lane tri lane to give Ritsu a great start and shut down this weak duo lane. Yeah, that's a pretty cool way to play this. And as you mentioned, they do have this Wind Ranger down here uh, messing with Ferev. He didn't power him also, but after that first blood, you're going to see Milan rotate up top and deal some damage with the Arcane Bolt spam. With Blood Rage, it's really strong. Deals a lot of damage. Yeah. And the taunts. Because you got to do it. You got to make it happen. You have no choice. Oh, damn. Look at that damage. Oh, Ferev. He Blood Rage fire. himself there for CS. Not doing a well enough job of it and taking some damage. Shaxa might be able to take him down. They do have stick charges also. The dodge around the trees and it looks like Ferev. Not level 2 yet for the Wind Ranger. Getting close and does have another wind run, but it looks like Ferev will be able to back out for the moment. If the they can find a kill. Here. A huge problem. And they will lose the life of the Skyrath Mage. Still going the way of Madara. Two minute mark now as we head off towards the mid lane also seeing the leshrac versus pugna matchup i feel like late game this is really terrible for brile is it as bad in the laning stage also uh pugna has a general advantage against most heroes just by using decrepify to ensure denies and cs and you can see right now he's five creeps up gets another deny there i will get that lightning storm cs but missed the other one so good so far for kaiser he's 11 and 2 against 7 for 2 i think that's pretty much an expectable outcome maybe lesh could be doing a little bit better here the laning stage definitely like we're looking and great so far. So annoying. Over and over again the deep preps and now top lane, they tried to get a side pull off. Does not look like it is fully going to work out for them. Forever after that early death is still struggling to find a place for himself in this laning stage. Four and one is all that he's got so far. No blood for you. See if that changes at all as he gets more levels up in blood rage and Decides to be a little bit more judicious about where he places them. Oh, Shackle, Shackle though. Shot. Able to hit with the power shot coming through. Also in the wind run, Forever is in trouble. Can they take him down though? Oh, no, and Toxic Zed is going to be the one that goes down. Yeah, they thought they had enough damage for that power shot. Had to travel through three creeps on the way to Forever, so it did very little damage. He does stay alive. They use the magic stick. Both of them playing with sticks. Madara, S2. Stick and jump away. He's actually going to turn around here. I don't think he's going to end up winning this fight. Wow. And the extra life gain as well for Ev. Just going to be able to sustain in this lane after the fact. So a really bad play there. It's going to be punished. They're just effectively just baited them in there with the, with the Bloodseeker twice. <laughs> yeah. So, again, we've often talked about the early kills not mattering all that much uh, as immediately the PL is back into this lane. And you see the CS across the board, it's still pretty heavily into the favor of the Dire team right now. Yeah, if they if it weren't for those two kills top, they would be definitely winning two lanes, and the bottom I would consider pretty much a draw. Uh, Kezu with good CS but low denies against the Spectre. Stun's gonna connect, they have a skewer. Well, and gonna do back decent in. damage here. They still have a stick charge and yep. a salve, so it looks like he can save his stick and just pop the salve, head back in. This is the danger of leaving the lane, but Kitrak now picks up an arcane rune, so he'll be able to help out with sustain a little bit more and possibly throw out some of those casts for just a little bit of harassment. There's a lot of trading going on in top once again. Madara is being forced to doppelganger, but it's going to get caught in the blood right. Another shackle, but the damage is coming up. Can they kill him in time? They do take down one, and Sokta now also in some troubles. They throw out arcane bolts from the fog. Another win up here top. I think Madara is playing too aggressively. This is... He has a tendency sometimes when he's playing heroes like PL of really being hungry for the kills and maybe in this kind of lane it's better to just 
play it a little a little safer. Get your CS instead of inviting yourself into a fight against Blood Rage and uh, a Skyrath Mage. Oh, Kezu accidentally pulled him in there with the Skewer and with the Maledict on him as well. This might He's be dead. a problem because he does run Take down out. here. Oh, wait, what? He didn't die. Well, they, they have vision on him. Kitrak's gonna run run him down. He can swap in a TP and try for a TP out. No mana on Kitrak. Oh, yes, sticks. And Mangos. And Mangos. Well, this is gonna take a while. I think Kezu <laughs> wants to die to the tower, but the XP is there. All so, right. Didn't really accomplish much by running all this way. Witch Doctor still got the AoE gold and the experience. Misery stalking in the mid lane looking for Brile. And I don't know if he's gonna make himself a target here at all. Well, also top lane, the battle is gonna continue as his pressure. Adara consistently Good mid lane, they are gonna be able to find it. It's not dying. Ryle still has the south, so he's fine. And the rotation in from Kitrak, able to get Misery there with the Maledict. This might be enough damage to bring him dead. While well, that's going on, also a lot of thirst up top as they pressure back and force out Kiel. So yeah, this is looking a lot better for them up top now. Whenever there are trades happening across the map, Forev gets so much stronger. Well, Misery's gonna TP top, they got the silence off. Now the Shackle, seeing if he can live through this one. The Impale is going to be there, and they bring him down low. Will find the kill. Milan now out of mana, as Madara is going to be ran down, or rather run down the Skyrath Mage. Nice, nice uh, doppelganger play from Madara. He baited Skyrath to use his remaining power on the Illusion. They grab themselves two kills with that Nyx rotation. Good TP from Misery to salvage that top. Obviously, that puts Kezu in a pretty awkward position bottom now, playing alone as Mag against two heroes. is not easy at all. He'll get what he can, actually just setting them up for two denies there. Not happy with that one. He wanted at least one CS. Hit the math a little bit wrong. And Ritsu will effectively be now free farming on Spectre. Top lane, they found him again, Madara. Oh, oh he just barely got there. out of it. They are still chasing though. Milan is going to go down and they almost found that kill a little bit more cleanly. The power shot missed the start of it. Still though, they find the kill that they came for. Three heroes up top and... In spite of that, Forever is still having a pretty good time as far as levels are concerned. Level 5? Yeah. What you would hope for out of the offlane Bloodseeker? It's, it's good enough. If the Blood Rate would have connected there on the PL, they might have even got a trade off. But Madara managed to just get out of it and then be able to do a Stoppelganger afterwards. Brawl. Chasing down Kaiser. Misery is trying to bait them to go for Kaiser here, actually. Oh, he clipped them! And barely right on the edge, and they're able to dodge away as well from the stun that was getting set up by Misery. They find one, maybe can find oh, themselves a second stun. as well. As Misery getting into trouble, they don't land with the Shackle there either. The ward gives them vision up on the high ground. Misery caught for the moment. He misses the spike carapace, and the follow-up stun just barely off the mark. But still, they find what they came for, the kill on Pugma. I think he did manage to carapace on the Lesh. Lesh was trying to use Lightning Storm to set up his own stun. Ah. And probably, in that kind of situation, it's difficult, right? Because you want to give yourself the highest chance of hitting the stun, but actually using Lightning Storm is counterproductive. Because you get stunned longer than you slow the enemy, and might have been better off just trying to go for a, a straight-up stun there. Oh, Misery's gonna run into trouble. He just... <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> that was some damage. I thought that maybe with Han up, they're going to think about making that play, but they definitely do not even need it. Uh, Han is up. We might see some rotations yeah, of things they're trying to bait up top. They're trying to bait the Dire top to go and commit into them so that they can use the Han top with uh, Ritsu. And this top lane gets really difficult for Madara when uh, when he gets level 6 on the Bloodseeker. Because if he knows which one the real is CSing and he just ruptures it, it Madara can't go for these like trade-off plays that he's tried before. He can't run away. They can easily get kills with Han. Shackle shot will connect. Oh. Good cast! But the turnaround, can it be there in time for Ev? Able to live through the initial burst, trying to run away from Madari. He's still going to be able to dodge away from it, and they bring down the Pugna. For Ev, still juking through this. They have Han available if they want to use it, oh, but nice. for Ev, nice. Nice. be punished. Socks have just clipped him there. The edge. This is what we've been seeing more and more often nowadays. The concussive shot maxed out from Milan just to make the early ganks that much easier. As bottom lane, Ritsu pushing back Kezu. All the Sus. Yep. Ten minute mark. A little bit of a lead for Blinkpool. And this is a lot closer than that uh, series that we saw earlier. Yep, this one looks like it might be a competitive game at minute 15 and onwards. Actually, the, the first game, OG versus Kingwin, looked pretty close for a while, but then it spun out of control real quick. Top lane, Madara. He's maledicted. They know which one is real. The they trading have the rupture him. as well, and Madara should go down because of it. That's what you were talking about. 
Yeah, I didn't actually see the rupture debuff on him. I'm not sure he was ruptured. If they ruptured yeah. something else, like an illusion there, but it was. I saw it on. It was. Him. Okay. He had so many debuffs on him, to be honest. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they they managed to find him. Toxica level six. I'll dig that. And they do have no other heroes in the area, so it's pretty tough to find a kill. Although it's a haunt out already, they get the silence. They're going to be able to chase him down. Easy setup for Ritz, although let's get shackled. They'll have vision because of thirst, and Fareb will find the kill. Interesting that this is when they brought their Spectre top, but not for the previous kills. I actually thought they were going to haunt when they were going in the Phantom Lancer earlier. But this time around, they will use it. And we'll be looking to push the tower. Ah, oh, I think I know. The idea is that they want to haunt when they have a Siege Creep. Because now that when he, when he realities to top, they have a p pushing power up here as well. So. It also happened pretty naturally, the, the timing with when the Dire were pushing bottom. So this was actually really nice from the Radiant. They managed to get this timing where now the top tower is going to fall because of Blood Rage on the Catapult is really strong. They almost got the full mid tower with the Shrek Edict as well and the Siege Creep. And all that Dire have to show for it is a bottom tier one that they rotated three or four heroes for. That was just flat out way more effective by the Radiant. Yeah. Good play from uh, Wind and Rain on that one. And if it wasn't for Misery pulling through this Creep Blade here, they probably would have lost the mid tower as well. So they do have to rotate other heroes to defend against it, but this tower is already down so low, and if you lose your mid-tower this early into the game, the rest of the map just feels so restricted. As Milan, level 6, but he walks up that hill there in a world of hurt. Looks yep. like for the moment. Cool, though, just gonna stamp at. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. You have Madara now in the Dire Jungle, or in the Radiant Jungle, rather. He doesn't seem too interested in being there, so he's actually going to cross all the way up Radiant's to his own triangle. And again, I feel like we've see been seeing this uh, a bit more from a team like Blinkpool than someone like OG. They're hitting more jungle creeps, okay. I would say. And I don't think it's that good. If he, if he doesn't feel safe anywhere, they need to make a safe zone. He should not be jungling uh, at this point as a level 8 PL. Not very effective. He's actually even dropping half to half HP farming these neutrals, so now the Bloodseeker is starting to get some Thirst advantage. Yeah, they're getting set up here. Top lane, though. Oh, they missed the Impale. That might have been dead Ritsu. Kezu had RP. Yep. Oh, and now the connection is coming from below. Bryle and Milan, they will run into Soxa. Oh, Red the shackle! The turnaround! Soxa can make it happen! They turn it, though, with the damage coming out from Milan as well as Bryle. Barely living. That was such a nice shackle. If there was any follow-up on that except that shockwave, they would have definitely got a kill. But Misery and... Because we're far away, it's gonna force the TP with the, uh, with Rupture. See, the funny thing about this is, if you remember, this kind of became like almost a meme at some point that, oh, if you're playing as Bloodseeker, just buy a TP. Just TP yeah. out when you get Rupture. Radiant it's a win for Bloodseeker because of all the nerfs that Town Portal has got over the last two years. He uses a 60 second cooldown on forcing you to TP to base on an 80, uh, sorry, yeah, an 80 second cooldown, and you have to run all the way back. It's just, it, it's an efficiency play. You're actually winning by doing this. Not sure the Milan thought there from Milan. And he's in trouble. He's not dead yet though. Haunt. They find Madara. Able to get him. Can they silence him in time? They do manage to find it. He's in a ton of trouble now and they've got the Mystic Flare. He's dead. I thought this was going to be an easy kill, but Wind and Rain. Come back strong. Tower will be the cost. So a good pickup for the Dire as well though. But losing PL. It hurts grab a, an important tower. Now the biggest concern I have for the Dire at this point, to be honest with you, is that Spectre is almost top net worth in the game. This is rare. Ritsu is having a really nice time because of the weak dual lane off lane that Blinkpool put, and because of the pressure that they were able to put top that forced Misery to come up and help. Ritsu has been having a wonderful time on Spectre. And right now it might not be so wonderful Radiant in a moment. Scanning. Oh, Radiant Scan. He has a feeling that they might be coming for him, but the scan right is now a little bit off the mark. It does pop trying to run, but the shackle is already there. And he is in no man's land trying to hide away, but this sustains vision. He's done. Oh, he wishes TP2. Radiant's Good pick for Blink Pool. That would have hurt way less if he didn't try to TP. This actually sucks, because now when he spawns, he can't TP out to any lane. He has to run all the way. Well, and you talk about it, like... You knew that Blinkpool had to make that move. Ritsu knew. He pinged out on the map where he thought they might be coming from, and the scan hits just a little bit late. Yep. If he scanned more to the left, he would have lived there. Misery sitting mid, getting some farm. He's gonna... Oh, they go invis. They have a sentry ward down, though. He's he ran to the left, though. Did not run into the trap. Top lane, however. Ritsu. That's Kezu, sorry. 
Brile on Kezu. Hey. Not gonna be finding anything here. Misery is just scouting. He's gonna get the bounty rune at least. So he steals that one away. So they get three runes. A tithe to the impurities. Uh, they're standing on top of an observer. They don't want to show that they've sentry. This is a really smart play. They're trying to bait Misery to come into them here. But uh, it doesn't seem to be working. So I would imagine that. Just a second. Nice attempt at bait by Kitrek. The mind games are strong, but Misery has a mind of his own. Hey. They do have a sentry ward here as well that's right on top of where the runes are, so I'm not going to be able to make anything happen there. Necessarily, since Misery is off and away. Blink Dagger just now completed for the mag. Maybe where we start to see the Blink Pool draft really start to come online. After the initial relatively good early stage for Ev, it's fallen behind in terms of CS uh, and net worth relative to the Magnus. Um, but he is very close to the blade mail. And also that level 10 talent, which is oh so nice, 8 armor. Yeah, blade mail is really good in this game. It's great against a hero like Pugna who wants to target you out, like single you out and blow you up. Uh, life drain will effectively not be healing you. Let's see, here's blade mailed. Um, good against PL as well. Oh, mid lane, good shackle from Sox, so this should set up a kill. Nice long range artillery from the Dire. Get the skewer off as well, and they grab that kill. That's actually a, a dominating streak, so that's a relatively high impact kill for position five. Yeah, definitely. Uh, of course, it's like nice to grab by Kaiser. <laughs> Always to make it sure they can get that extra bit of gold. Uh, the Wind Ranger chasing out Brile. The Shackle will not land, but instead Milan is here as well. well that should scare off the rest of Blink Pool. They do have Haunt back up as well, if Ritsu wants to get involved, but he's getting pretty close to this Radiance. Might be worth it just to hold off for the moment. See if they can get it with the first Radiance. Maybe though with the Armor Talon and Blade Mail being done on Bloodseeker as well. I don't know, how, how do you want to play this game out right now if you're Wind and Rain? Mm, I feel like you want to look for fights when you have Haunt. I think you try to take advantage of Spectre's uh, really key cooldown instead of just letting it sit here. Maybe you smoke up as a group, look for picks. Uh, enable Ritsu that way. He obviously wants to farm the Radiance, but actually not making moves is riskier. Because now he can't farm safely. He has no information on the map. He knows something is up, so they are going to smoke into them here. Will break. Oh, immediately the RP. RP onto three, though. Where's the follow-up? It, it's nowhere. They're not on top of these heroes at all, and instead they're going to be able to find Kaiser on one side, but Kit Track will go down, but so too will the Pugna. RP looks good, but when there's no follow-up, as they take down the last track, alright, there's what they needed, but they still end up losing the Magnus. Three dead already from Wind and Rain as they try and chase down Kaiser here, or rather Misery as well. Power shot connects right as the Blood Seeker is running away. That could have gone so much better for the Dire if there was any follow-up on that great RP from Kezu, but nobody was close by. So he nails that three-man RP, but like you said, follow-up just isn't there, and still... They managed to pull out a 4 for 2 fight. It was kind of funny if you saw how Kezu died. He was shackled, or rather he was ruptured, so he couldn't move. And then he stood next to a dead Leshrac whose edict was just pulsing. <laughs> <laughs> so he actually got killed by a dead horse. No. But, uh, yeah. That's still, it's a decent fight for the Dire. Not really the biggest of gold swings, though, because the, um, uh, the Pugna dies. And Pugna was the richest hero in the game, so a lot of gold went the way of Milan for that kill. Got 450, and Brawl got 450 for Kezu as well. And, uh... Most importantly, Ritsu did not die in that exchange. So, Radiance closing in on that, and he will now be top net worth in the game. Never mind, he's 100 gold behind. Oh no. But it's very close. Yeah. I, I feel like the other thing too is, it was again like that sort of anxiety that you can feel from Blink Pool of wanting to try and kill the Spectre. Spectre shows bottom, and then immediately the rest of the Radiant walk in this direction, and start smoking because they know that Blink Pool is going to run down there and fight him. Um, of course, the mag was there and ready to jump right at the start. We should probably also um, keep a bit track of the Lesh Rack's item progression because this was something we put a lot of emphasis on during the draft, that Lesh would have a hard time. Braz, 3, 1, and 2. He's actually doing pretty fine. He's playing against Nyx Pugna, has that one death from that fight, and is closing in on his BKB, which is the really the game-changing item for him. So, so far, he's managed to dodge a lot of threats. And once he gets this BKB and the Radiance Inspector, it's starting to look hard for the Dire to be favored in fights. They need a really great RP to be able to defeat a BKB Lesh and a Spectre Rady. Like, you... You don't really have the best tools on the Blink Pool side. So, they gotta try to play this advantage they have right now before those items come up.
We also saw there one of the strengths that you have of dealing with this Bloodseeker, which is the magical damage in that last fight. The power shot was the thing that clenched it, but that does start to become more and more of an issue as well with the Blade Mill that we talked about now. Misery is going to walk forward. The Sentry Ward that was here did expire, so they have eyes on Friv if they want to try and go on him, but that is not a kill that he can find solo in the least bit. Misery just wanted to get the bounty in, but... It was already taken. They were on the spot there with Wind and Rain, and now he's going to use this opportunity to place a deep lane ward between these two towers, I do believe. Or maybe he's still scout. Yeah, he's yeah. But he doesn't have a TP. <laughs> I just have him stuck here for like a minute. Um, AFK half a, a minute bit. until he has Vendetta, and then he's going to run back in. Radiance is now on. The Wind Ranger's been able to farm a Maelstrom with brown boots. I don't know if I like this, this game uh, from Soxa. I think he is a position four Wind Ranger, and they are playing Misery on the five, but oh, they're pinging him. They got him caught there, in trouble. He is going to be Blood Rage, but immediately found, and this should be a dead Wind Ranger. barely flared on this sentry that they had down here. Just for a millisecond, he was in this range. Radiance and bottom tower is under they dust him out. That's such a cool sentry, too, because all of the paths that would walk through each of these areas, yeah. they would spot it all out. That's really cool Radiance placement. They get added value, right? Because it's, it's intended for the mix. Yeah. But the Wind Ranger came in with the Invis, so that was not the hero they were expecting to find, but they'll, they'll take it regardless. It's a great kill for them. So, the problem I have with this uh, Maelstrom is that it's nice for damage purposes if he does manage to lock someone down in Shackle into Focus Fire and he gets a bit extra wave clear, but when it comes to utility, you're really limited. You, right now you have your Wind Run, and then you're dead. Like, there's nothing left. You have no mobility item, you have no good way of setting up Shackle Shell with like a Blink Dagger or a Force Staff. Uh, you have no team item like a Solar Crest or a Glimmer Cape. So, he is basically putting himself under a lot of pressure to perform. Like, yeah. it, it's harder to do what I think is his primary role in this game, which is to land a good shackle. Um, he, if he does, though, this, it's like a risk-reward thing, right? Yeah. He can do more in the shackle shot now. I, I'm not too big a fan of this in this game. So, it's more prone to being blown up by a hero like Milan, for instance. Oh, yeah. He finishes off this Atos, which he's Absolutely. getting close to. Yeah. If he gets caught by Atos, he's dead. And he has no counterplay. Uh, 60 GPM talent there for the next, trying to get towards his later game items. The Blade Mail is going to be there for Ritsu as well, so more of these items to counter out what the Pugna, the Wind Ranger are doing. I kind of am still a little bit curious what your thoughts are on the matchup versus PL this game. PL is right now about a thousand gold ahead of the Spectre. Um, this heart comes out, how does that matchup start to look? Um, I feel like when it's when the difference in gold is this little, I like the Spectre's chances just because of how good both Blade Mill and Radiance are against the Lancer. Uh, obviously a high chance of missing attacks when you're swarming him. Uh, Ritsu can fight back with both that and a Spectral Dagger, can actually do a lot against the PL. And when it comes to really late into the game, Spectre just has options that PL doesn't. Spectre can jump the entirety of the enemy team, and PL is a bit more limited. And it's funny to say limited in mobility when we're talking about PL, right. but it's actually more limited than the Spectre, which is, of course, the absolutely most mobile late game carry of them all, with the Haunt being able to just single in on targets immediately like he had a global blink. Um, so, uh, once again, it's a 3k lead for the Dire. I'm still favoring the Wind and Rain's chances in this game if they... If they start taking fights now that they have this Lesh BKB, I think they've hit a huge power spike and just need to start looking for the fight. They Maybe are. they want to wait for the Blade Melon Ritsu, though, I'm not sure. They also have the Atos just now finished for Skyrath Mage. Uh, so like you were talking about, no answer for that for the Wind Ranger. Misery is going to run out of his Vendetta, get down a deep board as well. Now, BKB there. We have a four staff on Bloodseeker, the classic strat. Just love to see it. Yep. Four heroes together, haunt ready, time to party. And Kezu, he's walking forward. He has his blink RP available. If too many heroes show, he gets only onto one. The haunt could come out to try and turn this back around, and it will indeed for him. Pops the blade now, four steps away, still alive for the moment, and the death board going to where Kezu ends up going down to the rupture four staff. Oh, misery's misery is visible. also revealed. And they take him down. They don't want to chase. That's a hell of a fight. That's two kills. They get a core and a support. That could have gone a lot worse for the Dire. Fortunately for them, they didn't commit harder than they did. The PL and the Pugna weren't there, or I think that could have been a disastrous fight, but still, it's a big loss because of this. What's happening right now, Bloodseeker, one of the absolutely biggest benefits of this hero in any role, is his ability to kill Roshan. They're gonna buy back, they know this is happening, but at the same time, Milan now is just gonna go up and actually just blow up Sansa. He just bought back. 
That Misery wants bad. to get a return kill. This is not gonna work though. The Skyrath Mage, tanky enough. 1300 HP on this guy, and Misery not even be careful. He's out of mana. He does get the spike carapace off, and there's gonna be the decrep as well. Pugna trying to make space. This is starting to fall a little bit off the rails for Blinkpool. Yeah, they had a 3k lead, now they don't. The end. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yep, their, their advantage is gone now. There's going to be a couple of bounties picked up by either side, so no relative gold swing there on the bounty runes at least. But um, Dire starting to look a little more uh, problematic for them. Good news is Madar is farming, so his heart will be coming up in just about two minutes. Maybe even less. He's actually very close. Never mind, just one minute. He misses 400 gold only. Finish this item. And that will definitely help them, but again, the Leshrac has got through the difficult stage of the game, and he can still deal with the PL to an extent. It starts getting difficult when PL gets, like, overwhelmingly strong, and you don't just pulse him to death. Ryle is still in an okay position. I don't know if I like this build he looks to be going with the... The Bloodstone, though. I... Maybe uh, just a straight oh. Shiva here would be nice. Oh, Misery's super dead. Yeah, he's in some nice trouble. Nice Carapace, but no, he's getting out of this one. Oh, they have Yule, too. Okay, not a bad way to make it happen. Oh, that was an offensive Yule. The Rupture, the oh, RP no. on the three. They pull him back in. Drop it down so low. The heart is just now finished off, and they don't have Haunt to try and turn this back around, but they have Ritsu in the area. He was shackled there for a moment. Blade Mail working to great effect, but he's still going to go down. Now the Doppelganger with Madara chasing him out. Rev needs to get the hell out of here. Which off the ultimate working. And with the Maledict, that might be enough to bring down Kaiser. But still, it is eventually going to be dead Kitrak. Kaiser will live through that Maledict. And the tables have turned. That went all kinds of wrong for the Radiant. So great Carapace from Misery bought time. They were both stunned up. Then after his, the stuns ended and they have him silenced, they use an offensive Yules by the Leshrac, just buying even more time. And that's enough for Kezu to come in and land that good RP. So mistakes being punished hardcore. They especially will regret losing the Spectre there. PL ran him over with the Empower. Spectre is not winning the man fight into a hard PL right now. When uh when he has absolutely no backup and just a straight one-on-one, -on -one, they'll stand a chance against Madara. Level 19 on Madara. Looking to try and take over this game, if at all possible. The Empower working to take through these Ancients as well. Now we need to figure out what's the next play for Wind and Rain. They still have Tier 1 tower up in the top lane. The Blink Pool again moving through with Misery here. Thought for a second there that it was going to work out for him considering they had the vision, but the immediate haunt, the chase forward, looking for a kill here on the, the Wind Ranger. And actually, they're starting to run through Madara. He's in some trouble now. Can he get away? He's going to get caught with a silence as well. That is a dead PL. They just went. I know, really out of position there. PL is in the middle of nowhere. His team weren't around him. There's no RP. Big punish. I feel like we're on this seesaw of ulti cooldowns. When RP is up, it goes the way of Blink Pool. When Haunt is up, it goes the way of Wind and Rain. Kind of who's going to lose more in those engagements. It ha it means a lot who gets the jump. If they manage to land the sounds on the PL, he has a problem. So he doesn't have the Manta to break out of it. That's the downside of going the Heart route. That you cannot actually deal with getting Skyrath sounds, which is what happened there. Misery, gonna Carapace. There's all the rest of the hero from the Dire are here, or rather the Radiant are here. Bryle's gonna find him. There's the Silence. BKB comes out already from Kaiser. Now they find the Wind Ranger yet again, completely done and dusted. The cask is bouncing between the two and Kaiser trying to drain the mana, but two, he needs to get away to RP. It pulls him back onto three. Can they kill the ball off? Oh, Radiant, Wind and Rain are done. At least in this fight, as Bryle is gonna be ran down. Another great RP from Kezo there, just in the nick of time. The the most important thing here is that Lashrak ends up wasting away his split earth on the Radiant Pugna in the opener. Uh, I think, how was it that started? Yeah, he yuled the Pugna himself uh, to save his Spectre and committing that stun onto Kaiser when you know he's just got a BKB and he's going to use it the moment he falls down, I think a bit of a mistake. He could have maybe gone in straight Radiant's up, focused the Nyx straight away and gone from there, but Ultimately, they also just clump up a bit too much, and this Magnus has got two great RPs in a row from Kezu that have definitely put the Dire in a good position. And it looked again so close, but being right next to the Shrine, being right next to this here too, they just couldn't kill them off quickly enough. And being right next to each other. <laughs> That's not a good one. A rather not good one in this instance. But yeah, 24 to 19, 5,000 gold lead. And the important thing is Madara hitting level 20. He's got these talents that are starting to work together. They need to find an opening. 
All right. RP is down now. Haunt is up. Who's going to go down? Good question. Let's flip a coin. <laughs> Anything can still happen, but this is really, really big for the Dire. Getting these two fights, getting the Spectre slowed down. Ritsu, probably sad that he has three kills and 12 assists on the Spectre. If the if the kill score was going a bit different for the Radiant, it would make a huge difference for the spec. The kills are pretty evenly spread on the side of the Radiant, so... Gold not really going the way they would like. And of course, farming efficiency for the Dire is excellent, with this Empower running on both Kezu and Madara. And Pugna naturally being able to clear waves and farm creeps really fast, so... They're looking good. Zuri scouting again. Running the kit track here. Is, uh... Death with on them. Very much done. Kill both supports. They found Milan in the mid lane at the same time. Just running at it, running him down basically with Madara. Skyrath hates this matchup. Phantom Lancer is awful to play against. Unless you hit him with the silence, you never stand a chance. And here's the buyback. You've got to defend against this high ground if they want to push for it. It's like they're going to head down bottom where they drop the Nether Ward. Madara going to start opening in on this tower, which is already down to half HP. And with the Nether Blasts, this is a very quick tower. They're going to take out this ward that's in the area. Rupture there as well onto PL. The Haunt comes out. They're going to try and chase this one down. He realities into the fight. A little bit scary, though, as they will turn it back around with the Spike Carapace. They're starting to drop low. Bloodseekers fast now. They kill them off, though, to BKB out for Bryle as he chases forward for more. Finds himself Madara yet again. That's going to be the dagger hitting. Can they turn this back around? RP back off cooldown again. If they can turn it around, Kezu is here, but he's getting his point dagger broken. He RP's only solo onto that Spectre, but it might be good enough to get the rest of the team out. On the other side of the fight, that's Misery dead for still chasing. Everybody is TPing away after three go down. Great rupture from Forev. Really started that fight. Getting the rupture on the PL when he's hitting the tower so that they have to they have to group up around the PL to protect him and that allows for the Spectre to deal a lot of damage, come in, and run a couple of them down. Curious to see which route Ritsu goes. He has the Yasha here. It feels like the type of game where he can do so much work with potentially a BKB, so he can just commit in after he haunts. Right now he's a bit scared of of John of uh, realitying in because the, the counterplay from the Dire can be pretty strong. Um, alternatively, obviously, Heart is good. He might be going Manta with his Yasha. Have to wait and see. But that was a big swing for the Radiant. They get three kills and what looks to be maybe two towers. I think it will be. There's no RP. PL is dead for another 15. They're not going to be backing off here. And take what's theirs and back up. Again, it speaks to the strength of Spectre in these games against these blinking heroes like the Mag. He needs to be able to get in and get a good RP, but if the Blink Dagger is being broken, it's just not going to happen. Um, so, I feel like, again, as you mentioned at the start of this, Vision, always important, as they do find themselves Misery, Yule Scepter, he's been able to purchase it, but they chase it down, Spike Carapace comes out, he's going to connect there, but with the Blade Mill out, Misery will die. Quick kill. Starting to hemorrhage a couple of kills here. Bloodseeker's favorite. I was going to say, is that a Bloodseeker pun? <laughs> 17 Bloodstone charges on Brial. Big item here. Manta for PL is very important. As a way of getting out of the Skyrath Silence if he were to get caught now. Obviously a great way of making him way more effective at pushing waves. The Manta style illusions are have much longer duration than the juxtapose one, so you can use Manta and split push lanes without committing your hero anymore. Downside is he still doesn't have a solution for rupture. If Madara gets ruptured, he has to stand and stand his ground and just fight. And that's the kind of fight I feel like Peel does not want against Lynch. He wants one where he can weave in and out, wait out, the, uh, just outlast the BKB essentially, go from there. But, I wonder, uh, gotta be careful. I, I kind of wonder if we're gonna see some nullifiers coming out on somebody from Blink Pool. I'm not really sure who the right hero would be for it though. Like, Wind Ranger maybe? It's going for a pipe though. He's way too poor yeah. too for that. Expensive. Yeah, nobody can buy it except Peel this game. He doesn't seem to want it right now. He wants an Abyssal. Shackle shot. They found Milan. It's a decent kill. But nobody else is going to go and join him, so they'll take that loss. Mid lane, Misery. Stalking things out, but now Radiant realizing they need to get back and defend their high ground. They do have TPs on just about everybody. RP is up. Oh, there's a Lincolns on Kaiser. They're going to probably put this on Madara when he's sieging, so he can't get ruptured as easily. Forward, the illusions go down. Kaiser, they have to force out the glyph now as well. 
and they need to take this fight if they don't want their tower to go down. The Shackle, Shackle. connects there. They think it's the real... Oh, no, no, now they realize it's not the real Spectre. It's the real Bloodseeker, and he's hurt. Ritsu, look next to you. The Sabanir and all the Basker. Misery's going to take the other one, though. Every coin helps. That's three runes for the Dire and a tier three. They Radiant claim a little bit here. Good stuff, fallen. they didn't overextend. They take the Shrine as well. And now probably Roshan will be the point of contention that this game really relies on for both teams. This Flesh Rack, by the way, since he picked up the Bloodstone, hasn't died, so... 17 charges on that means a quick respawn for Bryl, and he's bought a Blink Dagger. I love this item on Lesh. I think it's great when you have the BQB. Just get into the fray, find the right target. Of course, the downside is he does not have as much of a Shiva just yet, which you definitely want against PL. They're on the high ground. They find Kaiser. They want to. They could open up on him with a rupture, but they have the Lincoln Sphere. The jump forward, able to get it off, and now Kaiser ruptured, trying to run away with the BKB. But they have caught themselves yet another one. Wind Ranger down to half HP already, and he is dead. Mazara PL trying to run back in now. That's two already done. They buy back on the Pugna as well. Scarif Mage starting to fall down low. Can they get the catch? They're not there quite in time onto Madara, but the illusions are starting to get torn through. Kezu runs forward as well. There's going to be the skewer in. The RP cancels there for the moment. Ritsu needs to be careful. They pull back into it. Now with the Empower Madara, they're going to start to go to work. This is Spectre in a ton of trouble, but Fareb moves back in as well. Can they kill off Madara in time? They're burning through it. The stick charge to keep him back up and alive. And now Kaiser trying to take down another one. Mantis style trying to dodge, trying to kill. But it's not happening. Four dead and Roche open. And this is one of those difficult situations for the Radiant. I was watching in that fight while you were casting the actual fight. I was watching Bloodseeker running after the Nyx for a good 15 seconds before it finally killed him off. He connects on the Nyx, he gets the Carapace off, creates more distance, and he's so low. And I actually think it was counterproductive for Forever to kill him there. It's just such a hard decision to make, right? Like, do you yeah. keep him alive or not? He was on 10% HP, he can run back into the fight and kill the rest of the team with his allies instead of killing that Nyx off. With the Thirst, he would have been super fast and strong, but instead, killing him off actually slows him down and wins Dire the fight with that late RP from Kezu while Madara was still alive. It's just, there's that little bit missing on the Radiance. And now they're missing quite a bit, because this Aegis is huge. There's a cheese on Pugna. And who did they buy back on the Dire? It was Pug Kaiser. Yeah. Yeah. Only Kaiser. That's a great fight. Having to only expend one core buyback to win a team fight and get Roshan. Again, you look at this timing window. The RP is going to be back up uh, before, actually not before the Haunt, because they haunted so late into the, or he RP'd so late into that fight. If they want to now, they could think about trying to push again. Um, Spectre's item progression is still slowed down at this point in the game. Compare him to the PL, about 5,000 gold Radiance behind. And Blink Pool in a very good position to potentially close out this game number one, at least with Elena Rax. Still got a lot Radiance left to play, yeah. but it's looking scary. This feels like one of the smaller 10k leads we've seen in this tournament, just because of how the Radiant lineup works in fights. Like. Spectre is one of the best heroes at being behind on net worth 40 minutes in. Because okay. its relative net worth value is extremely high. Like, a Spectre with 15k net worth is a lot stronger than a PL with 15k net worth. Mm. So, it's definitely still competitive. But the, the Dire are starting to be in a good position. And the honestly, the main advantage here for me is not the gold. It's the Aegis on PL. I think that matters the most. Because now Madara can play aggressively with confidence. And just go in. Get something started for some BKBs and it looks like that's exactly what they're planning in mid, but it's going to be Soxa caught first. A lot of damage coming out though. PL already right on top of them. The Hawks try and turn this one back around and they do find the real PL already not a half HP. He's ruptured in trouble for Rev. Can they take him down? The Spectre seeing if he can kill off Kezu. The jump away. The RP's already been using for him. Four steps to the low ground. Manages to get in on top of them. PL again in some trouble. Mantas tries to escape, but they realize which one is real. Yeah. Now they'll back out. Very poor RP from Kezu there. He RP'd a solo Leshrac with BKB on. That is not going to do anything. His team couldn't connect on it either, so... Either miscommunication or just bad decision making, but that kind of... that That's not going to win them the fight. The reason they've been winning the previous fights actually is that Kezu's been patient. He's been waiting until the fight develops, until there's a good RP, and then going for it. This was their Aegis fight. The Aegis might actually end up expiring at this point. It's, how much is left on it? Two and a half Two minutes. minutes? So that will be about the time when Kezu is back in position with RP, they would have lost it. Speaking of losing, Kidrak is losing his life to a Nyx with a good <laughs> positioning. He actually didn't even have a ward there. It's the Radiant Ward, so Kidrak felt relatively safe, but no wow. sentry for him. 
Spectre TPs away here, also back to base, trying to build towards that haunt. It's like, or rather the heart, not haunt. <laughs> <laughs> He's also building toward haunt. Yeah, it's building. Yeah, this heart's gonna be big. 300 gold to go, but a lot of bouncy runes being claimed here by the Dire. The Ooh. benefit of having map control here, they will get all four runes, a lot of gold, two Dagons on Pugna. They grabbed, they grabbed another one. Second, see it. PL's close to Abyssal. Uh, maybe yeah. that's what they got, actually. Yeah, full Abyssal on Madara. No mm. buyback, though. He wow. dies without buyback and without the Aegis. Things can quickly get scary. He has a double damage and illusion. He would love to fight right now, but there's Radiant's nothing to find here. Well, that's a nice courier snipe from Misery. That's, uh... Did that have the vitality boosters on it? I think it might have. It did. Oh, no. This heart is getting delayed massively for Ritsu. Yeah, he's only 200 gold away from it. Misery says no. Takes it down. They do still have buyback on everybody on the Radiant. The doppelganger cooldown is also the thing that's getting taken now by this Phantom Lance. So this is what we've been seeing more and more often. You just spam it out and create a huge army of illusions before you walk into the pit. Although actually, yeah, here he goes. The doppelganger talent is insane. This talent is, it's too good. In my, I think it's maybe the best 25 talent in the whole game right now. It is impossibly hard to find the real one. The Atos doppelgangers away. Again, very little answers to this. And he doesn't have the Lincolns on him yet. So if they want to, they can go for a rupture. But again, really hard to get this off as Vidara just keeps on running away, uh, sending in the illusions. And that's Elena Brax with basically no commitment at all. Ice Rock, what have you done? Look at your creation. Yeah, this is uh, actually impossible to deal with. Aegis is about to expire. I think they want to fight here. The moment this expires, they want to go in. 30 seconds. Available. They take down the ranged barracks as well. They move forward. Gonna send those solutions after Milan. But guess what? We're gonna create some more because they're here forever. Although oh, he got he caught by the silence, silence there. Bit of, a, bit of a mistake from Adara. They can maybe go on it now again. 15 seconds. They have Ryle with the Blink Dagger ready to jump in already right at the start. They find him. Oh, and they take him down. Five misery. Out for misery. That's a dead Ryle. He does have buyback. Needs to use it here if they want to take this fight any further forward for Epop to BKB RP. Solo onto one. Are they going to be able to go back into this? No. And the Aegis expiring now. Ferev decides he wants to buy back. But the Lesh is not coming back into the game yet. Are they trying to bait this out and make him think he doesn't have buyback? Might be, but the only ones they're baiting right now are themselves. Madara is just taking this for free. The second lane of barracks. Doppelganger talent is owning them. There's the root. They do have a Mystic Flare if they want to use it as well, but Madara just jumps in, finds him. It's going to be the pop out. Bryle's still not buying back. Eight seconds left. At this point, it doesn't feel like it's worth it. But you just lost two lanes of barracks. Like, they don't have to go in there. Alright, buy back from the Skywrath Mage. They do have Blink Initiation if they want to use it from Bryle as they chase forward. They're breaking the Blink Dagger as well, coming in from that Magnus as Bryle brought down to half HP yet again. And that's a stun now onto Ritsu. He's completely out of mana forever. Pops is a Blade No, but he's just getting taken down as well. Sox is standing his ground while he's ruptured. They kill off the Bloodseeker, and this game has completely fallen off the rails. 24,000 net worth, BKB down. Kezu doesn't give a damn. And they're taking the last lane of Rax as Ritsu chases Madara, but he has been off the map more than he's been on the map the past two minutes. A shackle lands in the midst of the chaos, but they're Megan. This talent, man. Uh, the big thing that led to all of this, though, was the start of the fight bottom, where Bryle blinks in with Pulse Nova on, but not BKB, and gets instant Carapace. That is what made this final fight favor the Dire so much. It will be ending the game as it looks. Got a couple tips thrown out there as the Wind Ranger is still going to live through that. Kezu isolated here. He does have RP in six seconds, but he might go down before it happens, actually. The Spike Carapace again. Misery always there to help out his team, and they're looking for the RP. They get the Brink Logan. Can they take him down? I mean, Ritz is done. This game is over. Well, Cinderin. A couple, uh, couple of key timings in this game really made a big difference. The, this one Aegis that PL got pretty much 